Uh, got a lot of cameras you got there, hand. If you got a radio. Yes, sir, I do. Hey, boo. How are we doing today? Doing good. We're doing good. Tell you what, that's a fine looking Kenworth you got there. Appreciate it, Appreciate it. W9 B model 1993. Come on. Hey, well, uh, what I do here with this setup, uh, I talk to guys and truckers like yourself all over the country and, uh, you know, shine a positive spotlight on guys. You know, you guys are out there working hard. Uh, so uh, I cruise along with guys, uh, kind of get their story, you know, about themselves and the trucks and whatnot. Uh, so if they wouldn't mind uh, telling us about your truck and yourself uh, while we cruise along here. Oh, I just did. <laughs> I, I, you gonna put me on TV? Make me famous? Yeah, something like that. It'll be on the old YouTubes. Okay, oh, sorry for the bad word. That was a political correct. <laughs> yeah, you got one hell of a setup. Thank you, sir. Uh, well, how long you been trucking for? 79. Started with my dad in 79 and our model with, uh, Maxidine. 237 and a 5-speed. 10-4. Uh, what area are you from? From Tampa, Riverview, Gibsonton. Oh, nice, nice, nice. I live up there in Brooksville. Oh, okay. You, you know a guy, Arnold? He has like, uh, uh, three of them now. He used to have four. Yeah, Calvo? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, he's been on the channel also. I've interviewed him. Oh, got you. Yeah, I know Arnold since he was a kid, man. For a bunch of years. Very nice. So, uh, how many miles you got there in that Kenworth? Many miles? I couldn't even tell you. Maybe three, three and a half. I had it since it was brand new. I'm going 30 years with it now. Wow, that's really impressive. You know, there's there, there's a good handful of guys that are original owners, but, you know, trucks change hands so much. Uh, that's really cool that you've had it for that long. Sir. Yep, 30 years. July the 16th, 1993. So it was 30 years, July the 16th, 2023. Unbelievable, but yeah. Nice. So uh, what freight have you hauled with it the most? Sad. What type of trailers and freight have you moved uh, with it the most? Rapid and uh, well, my dad used to do dumps. I, I started with him with dumps. Just like Arnold's uh, dad, they used to know each other. And uh, I did dumps, and then I went to chemical tank lines, and in 93, the old man bought this truck, and uh, we've been doing flatbed, man, forever now. 10-4. Uh, did you mention what type of uh, engine you got there? 14. Uh, what type of transmission do you have there? 46-13B. Nice. Uh, is that the uh, original drivetrain? Yes. Tell us about the reliability of the truck. You know, what, what are some of the things that you've changed over time or had to, you know, routine maintenance or overhauls and things like that, you know. What have you had to do with the truck? The truck, well, we did a major job was the air ride and the back. It, it came out of the factory with a Rayco four sprint and uh, we did uh, the airbags in 2007. And that was my boy's idea. He wanted me to get air ride. I should have done it 20 years ago, man, but I was used to spring. Besides that, uh, I take care of it big time. Emphasis on the big time. Uh, so for some of the folks out here, you know, there's guys that are wanting to get into a position where you are. I mean, you you got a lot of years on guys, you know, right off the bat. But, you know, guys want to buy a truck and things like that. So uh, when it comes to maintenance and things, what are some of the successful things that you've done to uh, keep the truck, you know, your truck running the way it is? Work on it every Saturday. I learned that from the old man. I grease it every two weeks, and we do an oil change every 20,000 miles. I used to do it 12,000 miles, but my boy took uh, me into doing it every 20, and it's working out. 
Besides that, just take care of it and do preventive maintenance on it, and the rest is history, man. Oh, that's pretty freaking cool. You know, I, I gotta admit, you know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy for the success, you know, of, of you and the truck and things like that. And it's a mechanical item, you know. So the key is just doing that maintenance and being ahead of things, you know, to, you know, get ahead of things before things break, you know, right? Sure. And it helps that I park at the house, so it's easy to work on it on weekends. Yeah, that's true. Plus, I got my 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 my, my, my grandkids helping me. So that makes it a little bit easier. I just gave orders now. Do this, do that. <laughs> <laughs> For real, bro. <laughs> it helps out. Well, do you have them doing all the polishing also? I got a kid that uh, comes over. He's supposed to come over this weekend. His daddy used to do it. Now his son is doing it. 10-4 looks good. Uh, what type of rubber you run there? What type of uh, tires? I got a uh, Rollmaster in the back, and what did I got in the front, bro? Hey, I'm getting old. I'm forgetting. I just got them. Uh, Toyo. I'm running Toyo in the front. Ah, 10-4. I mean, uh, the, the the setup itself just is right out of you know you know decades ago. I mean, just that real nostalgic look and. When you pass by, I was sitting there on the shoulder. I had to do a double take and, and tell myself that no, that that is what I'm looking at. You know, uh, it's really, really great looking truck you got. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, we run a little fleet. My my oldest one and my youngest one is the dispatcher. And we go. We, we used to have eight trucks, and we're down to six. You can't find drivers, especially they don't want to do flatbed. It's work. Yeah, I hear you there about the work. Uh, I'm glad that uh, you got uh, you know a good family and a you know good you know your your boys there you know running with you, and you know that helps out too. You know who's behind the truck, you know who's you know who's behind the wheel, you know. Gotcha. Hey, when you came around me, I thought you were a cop, and I was only I was doing 74, 75. Well, man, I better slow down. <laughs> no, sir. Just trying to get up with you to get a good look at the truck and everything. Got you, got you. But don't let me slow you. Well, we're running pretty good right now, so we'll keep it right here. This is a good speed. You know, the traffic doesn't catch up with us too bad, you know, running this speed. Yeah, this stretch is 75. It's okay. Back there by Ocala, Gainesville, I do 65, 64. There's way too much traffic. Yeah, it's changed. It's it's horrible. I don't even go that way to do any filming anymore. Even when I go out of state, I avoid that area just because it's just way too congested. Roger, Dean. Tell you what, now when I go up to the Panhandle, Pensacola, Mobile and all that, I get up right there in 27, I follow 27 all the way over there to my, uh, Monticello. Mm -hmm. Yep, those roads are nice, believe it or not. You know, when I head out of town, like if I'm going up to Kentucky or whatever, I'll go up 222, you know, or what? I think that's what that is, going through Alabama, Dothan, Enterprise area. Uh, I don't even, I try to stay off, you know, 10 if I can, if I can, you know. Dimbo, Dimbo. Oh, you going to put me on YouTube and make me famous? Yes, sir. <laughs> I hear that. I got a couple more questions to throw at you. I'm kind of looking at this traffic here, so uh, once we get around this Sunbelt guy. Actually, I'm going to go up in front of him and hit that center lane. Hey, well, you want me to get behind you? Uh, no, you're good. I'll catch you once you come around this uh, the Sunbelt guy. Yeah, you can go ahead and move the camera around, right, from inside the, the cab? Yes, sir. Gotcha. Mr. Sunbelt's going to play blocker for us. Yeah, if you talk to Arnold Cowboy, tell him you ran into JR, the old man. <laughs> he can tell you about me. Out of all the years that you've been out here trucking, what are some of the most important lessons that you've learned? Lessons? Lessons you learn every day, but just, just be patient and be courteous to other drivers. That's it. Yeah, that, I'd imagine that's a key, and I'm kind of like, you know, a little exasperated sometimes because we hear about things or see guys and the, and the truck stops or wanting to fight each other, you know, over probably some of the dumbest stuff, but being courteous to other drivers really goes a long way. Yes, sir. 
Just be patient. Take your time. Relax. So when it comes to trucking again, are there any regrets, you know, that you've had? And I got a follow-up question to this, but so far, are there any regrets that you've had trucking-wise? Negatory. I'll do it again. Roger that. So with that being said, what are some of the, you know, some highlights, you know, out of your trucking career that, that you really, really enjoyed? Driving with my oldest one and my youngest one. Uh, he used to drive a 359 that we fixed up together, the oldest one. We sold it a couple months ago. And running up and down the road together, all three of us, and we took some nice pictures and all that. That was a blast. That's a blessing. I consider that a blessing in my career. And besides that, um, everything's good. I'm happy. That's awesome. So when it comes to uh, being out here on the road, um, I haven't asked you, I guess we should probably ask you this first, you know, what areas do you typically run? We're up to Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, once in a blue moon I go to Texas, I like to run up to Texas. Alright, so it sounds like the lower, you know, lower southeast? Sure. Alright, with well, that being said, it's, it, it sounds like you don't stay out very long, but you can clarify that. No, I don't. Here at Diesel Freak, located in Gaylord, Michigan, just an hour south of Mackinac Bridge. We offer the parts, turbos, manifolds, injectors, fleet service, down to your owner operator. We have customers with race applications. We have a dyno for diagnostics. What we like to do along with our own apparel is make apparel for others as well. Hats, t-shirts, decals, vehicle graphics. From mild to wild for your truck, here at Diesel Freak. What type of person do you think it takes to do this job? You know, you know, people want to. They think trucking is, is this or it's that or whatever it is. But in your mind, what type of person does this job? Man, I couldn't tell you that. I have no idea. That that's a hard question. I've never thought about it. Folks that like to sleep in, you know, check them off the list as a no. Uh, folks that uh, you know want to go to the finest restaurants for lunch, check them off as a no. You know, what are some of the things that guys will have to kind of fortify themselves and be ready for if they want to do some trucking? The driver, as a driver, I wouldn't even know. As an owner operator, be mechanically inclined and run it like a business. That's all I can say. It worked out for me for 30 years, longer than that. Yeah, 10-4 on that. My dad did it, and I do it, and my sons do it, so it's a trucking family, and it's, nowadays there are very few of us left like that. That's pretty key, you know, you know, having a trucking family, and, and one of the questions that I was going to ask you, which I won't now, because it sounds like you have a really good support system, you know, from, you know, having folks to help you there on the weekends with maintenance and things. Uh, describe that a little further for me. Yeah, they come out and help me. Uh, whatever we got to do. We do everything, but uh, we don't touch the engines. We got a mechanic for that. We got an engine, man. But besides that, we do everything else ourselves. Just like on brake, tires, freezing, changing oils, and all that, we do it ourselves. You have to. It's the only way you can make it nowadays. Yeah, I hear you there. Makes sense, you know. Makes sense. So I got another question to throw you. This is not trucking. Well, it could be trucking related. Uh, a lot of people are known for things, you know, uh, for many different reasons. But what's your claim to fame? Claim to fame for me, my family. Yeah, I mean, it's a, almost a no-brainer to, to you know, your answer. But I'm going to ask you to elaborate just a little bit for us. My sons, my grandkids, my wife, my family, that's it. I hear you there. It sounds like you're a proud man, proud of your family and everybody else, you know, that comes along with it. Sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir, that's what matters. Uh, I only have a few more questions. You know, I really enjoy them. I, I, number one, I'm happy that you had your radio on. Number two, I'm, I'm glad that you don't mind talking on the radio. A lot of folks have really take a lot of information from these videos, so I appreciate you being able to, to talk about, you know, the things that, that we're talking about here. But uh, the, the question would be, you know, how do you balance, you know, your work, family life, or trucking, 
you know, family life. You know, some guys are gone all the time. Some guys don't want to get out and work. You know, how do you balance that out? Oh, uh, I go out and I come back on Fridays and I spend weekends at the house and uh, I don't know how. That's it, I guess. That's the way I do it. Well, it sounds like you're, and that's good, that sounds like your schedule is a little more predictable and probably manageable and you control your schedule? Yes, yes, yes. We gotta bring everybody home Friday. At the latest. They gotta spend uh, they gotta spend the weekends at the house. Uh, that's a that's a company policy and it came from me. You gotta be you gotta have time to to spend with the family. Very important. Well that sounds like a good policy. You know, it's just like what Sunday dinners used to be, you know, right? My little brother, he should have been behind me, but I'm a, a day ahead. He's picking up over there. Well, he picked up this morning. But normally you would have seen me and my little brother. He has a W9 like this one, which real nice too. It's brown, brown with tan. Uh, W9, uh, 93. So if you run uh, into him one day, you can talk to him. He really likes the radio. He's into that radio. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, speaking of radios, do you have a CB handle that you uh, use? Mr. Mike. Mr. Mike? Sir. And my little brother, he's on 16 watts. Roger that. If you see another B model around here, JR Truck Lines, though. Oh, yeah, he, he always has his radio on. I mean, it's a necessity anymore, but, you know, after a while, you know, I mean, thank, thank God for squelch and everything, but you just got to have it on. You know, you just never know when you need that, that, that last second piece of information that somebody is trying to give you. All right. Oh, yeah. That radio, the CV radio can help you, you know, with traffic and uh, traffic jams and all that. Yeah, but most people nowadays don't have radios. Oh, there was an accident. You probably heard about it over there with Step Toy and ran into uh, the bridge. The interstate was shut down for hours and hours that day. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was a horrible day, traffic wise. Yes, one of my trucks was there since uh, I think it happened early in the morning. He got out of there at 5 5.45 in the afternoon. And I was behind him, but they told me on the radio what was going on, and I got up right there in Wildwood and went with. Was on 40. You saved my ass. Yeah, basically saved you the whole day. Yes, yes, yes it did. But the driver that I'm talking about, he's new school, he doesn't have a radio. Do you know what he has and he can't live with that? What's that, that cell phone? Hell yeah, a smartphone. You know what I got? What's that? A flip phone. Oh yeah, well, you know, the, the real old school truckers, they they, uh, they mess with CB radios and flip phones. Yeah, I don't care about all that. When everybody's looking down, I'm looking up. Yes, sir. Need to put that on a t-shirt or something there, right? They can make me famous? Yes, sir. For real, that's for real. Everybody's looking down nowadays. Nobody's looking up anymore. And it's like a drug and I don't understand that. I'm for real on that. I tell you what, I have to, you know, personally I, I agree with you. You know, there's, there's, there's an addiction, you know, social media addiction and things like that. You know, the, they make it where these, these applications and social media things, and uh, you know, I'm guilty. I'm out here filming things to put on social media, so I can't be too weird about it, but you know, sometimes folks don't know how to put it down and interact with everybody else that's around them and or be safe with it and not run into people in traffic. Yeah, but at least you got an excuse. This is what you do. It's different. I'm just talking about life in general and everybody. Yeah, that's true.
So I'm going to throw one more, I think one or two more questions at you. Um, when it comes to the truck, your truck there, what's your favorite thing about your truck? Thinking about it. I'm still thinking about it. That was a, that's a good one. Let, let me think. Let me think. Uh, everything? I guess. Everything. Nothing wrong with that. That must mean uh, there's a lot of things about your truck that you like there, right? Everything. I take care of it. Not a bad answer. It's not for sale either. <laughs> That's a good answer too, because before long somebody's gonna peek their head through the door wanting to know if you want to sell it. It's not for sale. I went out with my old man to pick it up. He's not around, and when I'm gone, my oldest one's gonna have it. It's not for sale. Now, once I'm gone, they can do whatever they want with it. But it's not for sale. Not even for a million dollars. I don't care about the money. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you, and that's something to be proud of, you know. I don't think I asked you where where you uh, where your father and your family, you know, started trucking. What area was that? Right here in Tampa. Looking back, back early seventies, because I started driving with the old man back in '79. So do the math. Yeah. Uh, with a single axle, that's how it used to be like that over here. Uh, single axle and with a fruit house. Uh, most people don't even know what a fruit house trailer is anymore. Because they went out of business years ago. Yeah, it's an old company. So you're a Florida native then? Sure. My dad was Cuban and my mom too. That's awesome. A lot of history over here in New York City uh, back in the day. Yeah, most people don't know about it though. Well, give us a, a quick rundown on some of that history then. Cigar making. It was, uh, that's why uh, Tampa used to be known as Cigar City. So they, they used to roll their Cuban cigars right there at Ebor. You can see still the, the factories. Now it's all bars and clubs and all that. Well, there's a lot of history in Ebor. 10-4. Mr. JR, it's been a pleasure, you know, cruising along with you for a couple miles here. Uh, I really appreciate everything you shared. You know, beautiful ride that you got there. And, and I hope it uh, serves you well for many more years. Appreciate it, Hank. You have yourself a blessed day and be careful. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I'm gonna call my boy now and tell, tell him what happened. You have a great day. We'll see you soon. You got a copy on that? Yes, sir. You gonna put the truck on YouTube? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna tell them. Tell my little brother too. YouTube, Facebook, the whole nine yards. <laughs> okay. Uh, unbelievable. Have a good one, buddy. Yeah, you too. We'll see you soon. Yeah, boop.